Hiya folks, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Farthest Frontier in our settlement of Enyaliton. And I'd say things are going kind of okay for us right now. We have expanded, we've got our level 2 housing since I bought some herbs. Have a little bit of desirability to fix up, but we're working on that right now. I think we're going to be okay. The big issue is we are constantly running out of food. And that obviously is going to come back to bite me in a very big way if we do not get on top of it before the next winter arrives. We'll try to gather up a few more berries and stuff like that, but it's going to have to be good enough. Now, I did do a little bit of reading, trying to figure out if there was another way that we'll be able to get things like some herbs in order to keep our cities up and running and keep upgrading our housing. Turns out the answer is no. As far as I'm aware, there is no structure in here that is going to be effectively an herbalist and let you grow your own herbs, which seems a little bit weird to me, right? I feel like there should be a building for that. I understand not making it something you can farm, all right? That's completely reasonable, but at least having somebody dedicated to growing into their backyard I can grow herbs you guys can grow herbs what are you all talking about it's totally fine so that's gonna be annoying that means we're gonna rely very heavily on trade to get those and keep our society a rolling it also would be nice to get an excess so we could start making soap and prevent some diseases that's gonna be very expensive also so far looking around on the map I have not seen any evidence of any kind of mining that will be able to take advantage of no iron no gold no copper that's going to be a problem as well, because it means that we are not going to be able to make things like tools and stuff, and I'm going to want to have those, so we'll have to buy them, and that gets expensive too. Basically, what it's coming down to is I'm realizing, on this particular map, in the plains, we are going to be relying very, very heavily on trade. And that is reasonable, right? I think we already kind of knew that going in, I just didn't understand the magnitude of it. That means we need to figure out our trade goods. Now, excess clothing and stuff from being able to grow a lot of uh, flax, sure, that could be an option. The pottery is okay, but I think I figured out the best trade good that we are going to be able to work with in this game. And that is going to be candles. Where's the candle maker? There he is, this guy right here. It only takes a little bit of firewood and some beeswax in order to produce candles, and I'm pretty sure you get more than one per batch. A single batch of the candles should sell for, I think it's 20 gold ingots each. That's not half bad, considering the uh, beeswax is effectively a laborless, free resource we are getting simply by virtue of placing down the apiaries, not to mention we get honey to boost. So what I'm thinking then, is we want to go around and placing down a lot of these apiaries so that we can extract a ton of honey and beeswax, and then we just convert it en masse into candles. Sell those, and maybe that's going to get me enough gold income that I can start managing the rest of my economy. Now, the apiaries love being placed next to all these houses and stuff. We could do things like that. we got a few spaces and stuff over here. You know, that could kind of work. And I guess I will place something over here. Sure, why not? But the real advantage is I can just kind of dot the landscape with them like this. And this is a completely reasonable thing to do. The plains have a lot of natural flowers all over the place. These are cheap. They don't require a lot of labor. So we can just have them everywhere and then just get rid of them later. And I don't even feel bad about it. This is free resources. Also, predators are attacking. Um, hi. You need to... Oh, God. This, this guy is so freaking dead. All right. Dodge the wolf. Kite. All right. This is like getting them animation locked so he can't bite you. And honestly, it seems to be working really well. <laughs> All the infuriated villagers are like, Get the wolf! They're trying to kill Morona! Boom. Done. Thank you. Anyway, that's all taken care of. Let's go ahead and get this garden trail built up, by the way, so we can get a little bit more desirability right here on this house, which was threatening to get abandoned. But now we have completely curtailed that disaster. I'm trying to play on three times speed here, by the way, and I gotta say, I'm a little bit spoiled. I actually uh, either have just released or I'm about to release a video for a game called Of Life and Land, which is another city get builder, but it actually can play the game at like a 300 times speed and works really well. So playing at three times speed right now, I feel like I'm being hamstrung pretty terribly. I got spoiled, man. Oh, another thing that I want to do. Place down an arborist so we can start uh, setting down some fruit trees. The sooner we do this, the better. Now, fruit trees are great in that you can place them down and they don't take a lot of fertility to work. So if I wanted to place down, let's say, an arborist over here, this would still be at like 98% fertility. That is substantially better than anything I could get if I placed down a bunch of farms. The sooner we get these down, the better because then I can start enjoying a lot of extra food. I really need more population. I want to set down some more farms and stuff here pretty soon, too. If that's the one advantage we have in the plains, is that we're really good at things like farming, I, I, I just feel like I really need to place down lots of farms, man. That's going to be important. That keeps us alive. And it's far more consistent and less labor-intensive, weirdly enough, than foraging all the time, which seems a little counterintuitive, but there you go. Oh, look! It's another bear. 
Lovely. Hi, Winnie. Now that I think about it, that's a bear that's hanging around my soon-to-be-built apiaries. Honey? Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. Oh, and the bear's now attacking. Down, bear! Down! There we go. Just mobbed the thing to death, and one of my villagers died. Yeah, you just can't take on bears safely. Shocking. Really need to get some soldiers if we're gonna deal with those guys. Or place down a bunch of walls and stuff, keep them far away from me. I don't know. A lot of farmers tending these fields over here, by the way. Which is good. It's exactly what we like to see. A lot of things getting done. Trying to get the crop rotation up and running. We got some turnips in a few fields. We got some carrots. We're also building our fertility back up with the clover. And the lightning's coming down too. You like to think that that would supercharge your crops, but that's not how it works. And the bees are not really producing anything right now. They're extremely slow for some reason. That's disturbing. Why aren't the bees producing more? Get out there, you stupid bees! All right, the trader is back. Um, hey, look, he is selling herbs. Yeah, I'll probably need to buy some. What else you got over here? You got medicines, meat, tallow. Hey, willow, and it's cheap. Okay, we want to go ahead and buy a bunch of this. Oh, and a second merchant just arrived. Well, how the heck did that happen? Oh, this is the person who sells all the ores and stuff and is charging a premium. Not worth, not worth at all, not yet. I'm wrong, by the way, candles are not worth 20. This is below average. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was like 10. The point is, though, once we get the candle worker up and running, you'll see. We're gonna get a lot more value. The wax is cheap, all right? I mean, if we can find any, I'll even buy some. But it's super cheap and easy for us to get. So this is still gonna be a good deal. Where can I place this candle shop? I guess I can just place it right over here next to the rest of these farms. This is kind of like little production alley over here. So sure, why not? I'm gonna start planting down a bunch of trees over here. In the arborist, there are a few to work with. You can plant down apples or pears, which will both be harvested from September to October. You could also plant down peaches, which can get harvested from June to August. Obviously, you'd like to have a bit of a mix of both. Honestly, until I get some additional laborers, uh, there's nothing I can do. I'm completely stuck economically, which I find exceptionally frustrating. I need more people. Where's my immigrants? I do have 56 wax right now, though. That's a good thing. Also, honey is great. You could sell this. I think it's worth at least a little bit of money. Can we see that anywhere on here? This guy's not willing to buy it, so no, I cannot. But honey is great in that I think it's a food source that technically wouldn't spoil. Then again, wait a minute. I don't know if people can actually eat honey. I don't think they can in this game. That's a bit weird. No calories there. What you do with honey is you make mead, right? That's what you typically would do with the honey. I think technically speaking, this honey is doing absolutely nothing for me until we have a whole new production chain. Well, if that's the case, let's go ahead and stock, start stockpiling 139 honey. I'm also getting a little bit frustrated here just because of how slow everything seems to be moving now. Like, nothing is happening right now. Nothing at all. I've got no extra workers. I've been sitting here with an absolute deficit for way too long. And I'm having births. That's the thing. My population continues to grow. It just happens that I've got 34 freaking children. It's a lot of children not contributing to society is all I'm saying. In the long term, it's gonna pay off amazingly. They're all getting an education and everything. But still, oh good, now some people wanna leave. Because this homestead that they were happy with, all of a sudden they're not happy with. For no good reason. And we're also completely out of logs. Oh, thank God, some children grew up. There we go, gosh, all right. Why are we running out of logs? We should have plenty of people over here doing this. All right, I need, I need more focus on the trees, less focus on the stone, please, thank you. And raiders are approaching, because of course they are. Oh, it's a lot of raiders, too. Yay, this is definitely not gonna end in tears or anything for me. No sorry. Totally fine, totally normal. Oh, for God's sake. All right, there's not much I can do, honestly. I have no really good defenses, nor do I have any soldiers to speak of. So when they start getting even a little bit close, it means it's time to sound the alarm and pray that we can shoot them all dead. And if we cannot, that's a problem. The village is being raided. There we go. Sound the alarm! Everyone get to the town center! Especially the poop gatherer over here, my little poop smith. Get over here! Shoot them! When they get in range, shoot them dead! Well, we're definitely getting a lot of them shot dead. They're trying to attack my town center. How dare you! No! Okay. I don't think we lost anything. I, I think we took a minuscule amount of damage overall. That was not a problem. We're, we're good. We're good. This guy will buy my honey, by the way. Four gold for a hundred? Yeah, sure, why not? We'll just go ahead and sell all the honey. Why not? 732 more gold for me. Thank you. All right, so we have a candle shop up and running, finally. Looks like two wax becomes four candles. Wax was worth 
I don't remember. I think it's like, maybe maybe it's four gold. Something along those. Kind of close to the honey. So, eight gold becomes 40 gold. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about as a phenomenal trade. Like, if we can start producing an absolute ton of the candles, uh, this is absolutely the trade good to play with. Heck yes. And another trout. Gosh dang, this map, I tell you what. It is not doing me any favors. All right, knowing that this has been such a consistent problem, what are the most heat resistant and drought tolerant crops I can get? Beans aren't bad, peas are pretty good, turnips not as good, but if you grow those at the beginning of the year, that's not terrible. Uh, probably not carrots. I think from here on out, we're just gonna have to stop growing carrots. That's just gonna have to be the reality of it. And I definitely can't grow any leeks. I could probably justify growing some wheat and stuff at some point. Maybe rye. Rye is really quite decent for us. Yeah, all right. I think it's really gonna come down to beans, turnips, and peas. Those are the main crops I'm gonna have as staples. And until I wanna get some windmills and stuff, we're just not gonna do anything else. It's gonna have to be good enough. I think one other thing that I've always found a little bit frustrating about this game and that has not changed is the micromanagement of the forager shacks. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I just need a larger work radius or some way of automating the fact that their working needs to kind of rotate along with all the different crops. Having to come back here every single season is a really kind of tedious exercise. And, I mean, if you forget, you actually lose out on a lot of food. It's a big freaking deal. Gosh dang, it's another freaking bear. I also don't really understand why these homesteads keep losing their desirability. They're fine enough that they're willing to upgrade. So what the heck is changing here? You know, is the well, the, the, the park, the school, the market and stuff losing its luster? Is that what's happening over here? I don't see why it would. Everyone else is fine. Why are you having problems? Ah, frick me. Oh, a bunch of buildings just caught on fire over here. I saw the lightning hit. I don't know how the fire instantly traveled over to this other homestead, but it did. Charming. One thing we could build that actually might make people a lot happier. A festival pole. I want to go to a festival. Yeah, we could do that. Play some Mayflower pole somewhere over here. But let's say close to the market. This actually would hit almost all of our housing and boost up desirability by another 4%. And it's not even that expensive, honestly. Sure, why not? 17 people have arrived in my village, holy crud! Now that's a lot of people. But I was looking for immigrants, so all right, let's do it, I'm down, let's do it. I do feel like this means we need to get even more farms up and running though. And honestly, it may almost be time for us to consider moving on to, let's say some proper wheat or something. It's almost that time. And with this many extra laborers, I really don't see any reason not to just go ahead and add in a little bit of extra candle making. Let's get some additional clothing production. Pottery we've been kind of doing okay on. I don't feel like I need that right now. So this is all solid. Gosh, for once, I've actually got a glut of people. I'm not sure what to do with it. We could place down one of these windmills. All right, a grist mill where it's gonna turn things into flour. We could do that. Does reduce desirability, so we need to keep that far away from all of our people. But I could place it up over this direction, and I think that wouldn't be a bad choice. Why does it look like the windmill is sort of sinking into the ground? Does this look normal to you? All folded up? I don't think so. Maybe we just place it over here or something, you know? It's not enough to ruin the desirability, so we could place it kind of close to all of our storage, and that would be fine. Yeah, we'll do that. That looks broken to me. But this is one of the reasons we got the heavy tools, was so I would be able to place that down, which means we then want to be able to place down a baker, which does boost desirability by a small amount. Actually, I could get rid of this house right here and place it, and this would be close to our center of our population and get a lot of extra desirability. Plus, just create some much nicer little paths like so. Yeah, all right, this is a lot of building projects. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but all right. We need more builders. That's fine, I got a lot of people we can work with. This is great. Villagers struck with dysentery, oh boy. Well, the good news is actually I can leave someone in the healer's house permanently now if I don't want to micromanage this anymore. We're making more than 25 gold per month. Not a lot more than that, mind you, but we are. So that could help. Actually, I wonder if this is part of what's contributing to the whole desirability thing. Do you think? The fact that I keep turning it off reduces desirability in a few spots? That could actually totally be the case. I really need to get a vault, by the way. Part of the reason that I'm having so much trouble at my storehouse and it's full of inventory is because we're storing, storing like all of our gold over here, which is a bit much. We can temporarily solve some of that if I'm willing to just go ahead and move more of the gold over here into the trade post, which I am willing to do. That's not a big deal. 
The game keeps telling me that I need to move my work area over here. It's because I can't find any stone. Admittedly, that is a problem. Turns out in the plains, there's not a lot of rocks just sitting around for me to bash, which sucks. Anyway, how are we doing on things like these apple trees? Tree maturity, nowhere near ready. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the problem with the Arborist. It's gonna pay off in a really big way later. But right now, it's not gonna get me a lot of value. What do we need to get up to T3 with our town center, by the way? I need six more homesteads, and I need another 35 population. I'm honestly kind of surprised. Like, we, we really are having to grow a lot more than I thought before we can move on to the next tier of technology. Not that that's a problem exactly, I'm just kind of surprised. I do wonder if it would be worth doing something like getting some chicken coops and so on. Or maybe we could get some goats, or we could get another barn. Yeah, you know, I mean, it would be a way of getting a lot of extra fertilizer. Wouldn't be a bad idea to have some cattle. But, um, I think we have to buy that from a trader. And at least so far, we have not seen anyone willing to trade any of that for us. We might have to special order it, or we might have to get lucky, or maybe if we build the barn that will trick the game into saying, hey, we should send someone who actually sells cattle. I'm not sure which it is, um, but I, I don't really feel like finding out right now. We got enough to worry about with our existing setup, let alone trying to deal with a bunch of cows. We should definitely place a granary over here, though. That is going to be a thing. Because now that we're going to have grains, rats really love stealing that stuff from you. They absolutely love messing with you in that way. So placing a granary close to the windmill may not be a bad plan. The alternative, of course, is that we go through here and build a bunch of rat catchers. Which are a good thing to do. They boost up desirability, so that's not a bad plan. Um, but until we actually have to deal with any rats, it's just not worth the investment right now. We'll be later. Right now, it's fine. So bread is going to end up being a phenomenal thing for us. That's going to be a ton of food. Because I don't know if you guys have ever done any calorie counting or anything, all right? That's something I've actually been doing kind of recently, trying to lose a little bit of weight. And it's worked. I've lost like 10 pounds in two weeks or so. And that's mostly water weight. Don't get too excited. But the point is, um, you calorie count. And it turns out that um, getting a halfway decent amount of protein and fat and stuff, that's not too bad. Getting enough calories out of vegetables, very difficult. Getting way too many calories out of bread? Frickin' heck! Bread is so much more calorically dense than I would have expected. I mean, it's not on the same par as meat, but like, you can eat a lot of bread pretty easily. That stuff's got a lot in there. Good God! No wonder people liked bread back in the day, right? You know, in ancient times, Having a relatively safe and delicious way of getting a lot of calories? Of course that's gonna trigger all the dopamine. All of it! 20 villagers just graduated the school! Alright, our class sizes might be getting a little bit large and out of control. We still have 34 children growing up. <laughs> that's a lot! Sell the excess honey, still can't do anything with that. That's worth a lot of money, please and thank you. I don't really know what I'm doing with my tallow, by the way. What can we do with tallow? I would have thought you could do something as far as, like, maybe making some candles, but that's not a thing. What do we do with tallow, actually? Hold on, maybe I can find a way to do something with it. Ah, soap. Right. You know what? Getting soap wouldn't be a bad plan. Wow, this stuff loses desirability like crazy. I didn't realize that making soap was such a disgusting process. Right, but the point is, it's gonna cost me another 50 planks, which is a little excessive. But I wouldn't mind being able to start producing this stuff just so I would be able to reduce the number of diseases that are striking me down, because so far, there's a decent number that I'm having to deal with, and I don't like it. Plus, we have, like, tons of tallow. So all I have to do is buy herbs, and that boosts my health. I think it might be prudent to start building up some additional defenses, by the way. Maybe we can go ahead and start building some of these extra lookout towers now. Costs a little bit of money and stuff, that's fine, though. We're sitting on a decent amount of cash. Doesn't cost me any planks, which is the big thing. And yeah, if we can get some additional defenses when the raiders inevitably come back, and you all know they're gonna, we can have a few towers in position throughout the town where we just take a few pot shots at them. Hopefully that's a good idea. It's probably best, though, to be placing them close to things like my town center, as well as my trading posts, because that's where they're gonna want to hit me the hardest. So we'll just go ahead and place some of those down the main road. Three towers along here should defend most of these areas. This area is undefended, obviously, and that's scary, but I think it's going to have to be okay for the moment. And then we'll need plenty of, like, bows and arrows and stuff. I mean, we could go ahead and start working on getting myself some barracks. 
right? That could be a thing. Get myself some barracks, get some proper soldiers. We could also start placing down all the palisade walls and stuff we're going to need. Also, cavalry. Remember that the military units got completely reworked in the latest patch. I don't know how. That's something we are going to explore and figure out how well it works. But that is something relatively new, so I would like to try this out. It just seems like right now we're in a position where it's a lot better to just play defense, let them come to me, and then just shoot them all. That seems to be a working strategy for the moment. I do want to place down a vault, though. A vault would be good. We need to get some additional gold storage. Could place it kind of close to where my uh, marketplace is currently set up. That way we can easily drop off the gold over here. Yeah, seems fine. Though we are going to need to buy some iron bars for that to work. And uh, so far there's only one trader I know of that can sell that. So we're going to have to wait for a while. I do think we need to get some more work camps though. Um, sort of struggling a little bit to get enough wood and stone. Maybe we can place something up over here, I guess. Yeah, and this direction could be halfway decent. I'm just worried about my raw materials a little bit. Because we're running out of logs rapidly as we start going through a lot more firewood and try to make as many planks as possible. Wouldn't be a bad idea to just buy stuff when the traders come in. If that becomes an option, I'll happily take them up on that. But, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We do seem to be running out of that pretty rapidly. Um, they need to get some additional wagons. I don't think so, though. I feel like the wagons we've had have been able to take, like, the one or two trips from the clay and from the work camp without much of an issue. We should pay attention to this and see how much downtime this guy really has. As long as he has downtime, we can continue expanding. If he's never uh, booked up in the stables, that means he's overworked. We are completely out of grain, by the way. So, bread was nice for a while, but it's going to be disappearing pretty soon. I'm going to try playing around with having a couple of crop fields that are dedicated just to wheat. May not work, though. I'm pretty sure wheat does take a lot of fertility out of the soil, which is why I'm going to give it some clover opportunities. That may not be a thing for me, though. I may actually want to consider, in between videos, redoing all of our crop rotations. Part of the reason being, I do believe that diseases are capable of spreading between uh, adjacent crop fields uh, if they have the same plant type. So if I have a blight that is affecting beans and both of these fields are planting beans, if one gets infected, I think the other gets infected. But the advantage of this grid pattern I'm doing now is I could grow, let's say, beans here, carrots here and here, and then turnips here, here, and here, then beans, and then carrots, and so on, and then just keep rotating with that. And in theory, I think they'll never spread disease, which could be kind of nice. We'll have to play around with that, though. There's definitely a way to get a set it and forget it strategy in case this actually these guys are infected right now. But there's definitely a way to go ahead and get kind of a set it and forget it strategy with your farms. Um, that said, a little bit of micromanagement probably will get me better value. So I don't know if we're going to quite get that. We'll just get close. Hi, trader lady. Ugh, you sell iron, but it's expansive. Why do you have to just scalp me? Huh? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to be so mean? Tell you what, just go ahead and buy a bunch of my candles, all right? 960 gold is a pretty decent amount of gold. I'll take it. And we need to buy at least 25 of these bars. More, of course, if I wanted to actually start turning them into armor and tools. But we can't do that right now. This is going to have to be okay. Do you sell tools, by the way? You selling any tools? I don't see any. You do have some weapons. We're missing at least a couple. I want to buy a couple here because our towers need weapons for guard duty. And yeah, you don't have any regular tools today. Oh, that sucks. And raiders are approaching. Raiders are approaching. All right. Well, we all know what's going to happen here. We're, oh, they're approaching from a couple different directions. Ooh, hello. So they thought that they could sneak up on me, eh? Well, just when I was struck with dysentery, but 21 of my children just graduated. All right, happy graduation. Everyone grab a bow and defend the village. Time to ring the bell. Everyone get to the town center. Be prepared to defend your homeland. This is why we have all these towers in position. Here come these guys. They're attacking my market, and there's not much I can do about it. All right, this is annoying. Um, it's got a lot of stuff that I want to protect, like the herbs. All right, I need to get some towers over here, apparently. They're going to actually break this down, steal some stuff, and then they're going to come further into the village, at which point we're going to start shooting them, which is now working. So towers are doing their thing, and hopefully we can kill these guys and anyone who actually had any inventory gets murdered. They're trying to get to my vault right now, actually, which is smart, but there's nothing in there, so it's not as smart as they thought. 
And then these guys should hopefully die and they don't get to take anything with them. I hope. I think we might be safe now. I could be wrong, but I don't see any evidence of problems. Let's go ahead and hit F3 real quick and look for any nameplates that might suggest there are raiders anywhere nearby. It appears not, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the town bell and let everyone get back to work. And a frost came through. I'm sorry, I thought that our uh, wheat was fairly resistant to frost, weren't you? Eh, not as good as you'd like. All right, well. Whatever, either way, it looks like we're gonna get about 500 or so wheat out of that uh, field, which is great, about another 280 there. So that should be enough to keep our windmill going for at least a bit. And it looks like it's a one-to-one -one ratio as far as wheat becomes flour. All right, so, you know, getting another 600 wheat, that 600 flour, what about the bakery? Again, one-to-one. -one. So, okay, I think we have a well relatively nearby, but yeah. So 600 wheat becomes 600 bread if you have at least a couple of people working you put in the labor. That's not bad. I feel like bread still spoils pretty quickly. At least personally, anytime I buy, let's say, some bread over at, I don't know, Walmart or something, that stuff is gonna spoil within like four days. I'm not even kidding. It actually really makes me concerned about how long their bread's been sitting out. But regardless, the point being, how good is this really? I mean, if the food's just gonna spoil pretty darn quick, how good is it to make any bread? As opposed to, instead of putting in the labor of turning 600 wheat into 600 bread, what if I just grew 600 carrots, and then I didn't need to have anybody put in any labor, and we had an equivalent amount of food? Right? Does that work? Is there like a caloric difference between the food here? Is that registered somewhere as far as people's uh, hunger? That, that, that'd be kind of smart, but the game doesn't tell me that, at least not immediately, so I have no idea. Hey, by the way, there is a source of coal over here. Now, that is good to know. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the coal, but it's there. It would be nice to place down a temple. This is worth a lot of desirability, especially if I place it relatively close to my housing. What's the remaining range left on this market? Okay. So if I place the temple like down over here, that could be a thing, but there is some fertility to worry about, so I might wanna save this for some farming. Um, Maybe right here in this corner then, actually. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna build it right now. Okay, this is gonna be a very expensive one. It's gonna take a thousand gold, it needs a hundred stone, it needs a hundred planks. That's a wee little bit pricey. But placing a temple over here and just using it as a placeholder, this gives me some idea what I want to do in the future. And if I can build it, that is a way of getting that desirability over to the next threshold, or at least pretty darn close to it, where we will be able to upgrade to tier three at some point. And I've almost got that, actually. I just need a better town center. I've got enough food, pottery, and candles. Yeah, a bit more desirability is technically all we need. And then boom, we're ready to go for some tier three housing. That would be good. I'm literally going through here right now, though, and looking to see if there's anything else I haven't built yet. We're not worried about animal storage right now. I don't think... I mean, I think the only thing I'm missing literally is just going to be, you know, an armory. You know, anything with metal working. I think that is literally all I'm missing right now, and then a barracks. Yeah, confirmed. All right, soldiers and animals. That's it. Everything else has been built up at this point. Okay. Well, the good news is I feel like our money situation has been getting substantially better. We're producing loads of clothing now, which can sell for a decent amount. We're producing a decent amount of the pottery. We have a ton of honey. And we should have... Well, it looks like we're not actually storing any candles. Let's make sure we are always trying to store, let's say, another 200 candles or something along those lines. Uh, let's see. Raw resources are in good shape. Yeah, actually, I think we've more or less solved our problems. We are now in a really good spot to take a big leap forward in terms of technology. So I'm gonna try to attract the last 25 people that we need in order to upgrade the town center to level three. By then, we'll easily have the 25 homesteads. And if I can extract enough of these planks and enough of the stone, we can definitely build up the temple, which will make everyone happy. And once we have a temple, we can figure out how to extract this relic over here and what the heck this is supposed to do, because this is new. I've never seen that, so that could be important for us. This is a good place for us to end this video, though. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If so, I would humbly ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, make sure you subscribe, because I know some of you haven't, and you ought to do that. And I will see you guys next time.